you know, this thing wasn't ready, so fell. Why? Why is uh, why is Card why does Cardano uh, get that? Well, because we don't have no VC backing. Yeah, all these other guys are VC coins. Yeah, a large part of the distribution went to a small group of holders who also transitively own the media in crypto media. So you always look at who makes money and who doesn't make money. There was a very fair distribution in Japan with Cardano, and it, it didn't launch like any of these other things. And it had a very pure launch. So nobody really got rich in Silicon Valley. There was very little, actually no American participation, uh, no European participation. So all the European VCs, all the American VCs, you know, they, they missed it. And then a lot of these guys were listening to the Ethereum, Ethereum maxis. And so the Ethereum people were saying Cardano is not just a bad project. It's a criminal project. It's a scam. It's a Ponzi scheme. So they just said, whoa, I, I can't touch that. No, no. Charles Hoskins is a pathologically lying sociopath and he's Bernie Madoff. You know, no, 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 I'm not, I don't want anything to do with that. So they missed the boat. And since they missed the boat, there's a confirmation bias where they focus on mostly what they can with negative. Uh, and and you know, who gives a fuck? It's a, I'm not here to take care of, you know, a small group of people in Silicon Valley or, you know, some people think they're big in the space. Space is a lot bigger than those people. Uh, you know, we're here to change the world. You know, we're here to, you know, get Africa on board. We're here to actually build real use and utility. And every meaningful metric, we're killing it from social media mentions to user adoption growth, uh, wallet installations, uh, you know, everything you could track has had exponential growth over the last two years. Um, you know, just give you a sense of transaction volume. We had more transactions the last 90 days than the entire history of the project combined. And you're telling me we're not, we're a ghost chain and there's no use in utilities. Come on now. Uh, you know, you got, you got some land you want to sell me to. <laughs> it, it's so, the way you just explained it, it really does go back to historically what people originally were saying about Cardano, the project, right. you. It's like these these seeds of lies that got planted. And maybe that's even still the scrutiny is just growing on those those toxic trees that kind of formed all the way back then years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the bigger the lie, the more you have to do to defend it. And it's, it's gotten to a point where it's pretty absurd and obscene. And they write books and these other things. It's like, okay. <laughs> and the only way to combat it, how do you combat it? Just build. Well, yeah, combat, just build and ignore it. You know, also just call them out on the absurdity. You know, like I guess there was this one book said, I said I jumped out of an Apache. And you don't even jump out of Apaches. Come on, get your helicopters or you jump out of Blackhawks, not Apaches. I was just like, think through the stupidity uh, of these types of things. And, and just the kind of, bizarre perspective on life you have to have to just write that down wholesale in these types of things. Uh, yeah. But they do because they want to believe it uh, or, you know, it's just convenient to write it down. And that's the politics of personal destruction. And we failed as a project if Cardano can be dismantled by an attack on me. So it's an indication of our level of decentralization and strength as a community or the fact that I could be completely tarred and feathered and just be burnt to the ground, but Cardano itself survives as a project. It's a good thing. So in many ways, the attacks are actually a good indication of the level of resilience of Cardano, the fact that we've been able to grow and succeed despite the fact that there's been a lot of obstacles and barriers and these types of things. Uh, that really tells you uh, that we're on the right track. And by the way, Bitcoin had the same growth curve. I was around in the early days of Bitcoin, and it was brutal. Whatever incoming I get, whatever incoming Cardano gets, let me assure you, the incoming that Bitcoin had, you entered every conversation with a normal person of, oh, yeah, Bitcoin, isn't that that thing for drugs and money laundering? That's where you started in every single conversation, if they'd heard of it. First, they'd never heard of it. And if they'd heard of it, the only thing they've heard is drugs and money laundering and child pornography, Silk Road. That was their frame of reference for Bitcoin. Yet now it's... $2 trillion ecosystem. It's huge, right? You know, Bitcoin has become a major thing. Nation states have adopted it. So that criticism, the proclamations of death, the, and it's still attacked. There was an article uh, in December um, from the FT where they said Bitcoin is the biggest Ponzi scheme in human history. It's just it's like... How is that possible? They're still I know. I, like, what corporate overlord do you work for that is losing because <laughs> of Bitcoin? You know, so... 
it, it makes you stronger at the end of the day. And, and what you don't do is you don't pay attention to it. And what you do do is you try to say, okay, what do we need to achieve to achieve our goals? And you have to have singular focus. I know what we need to do to get Africa on board. And you know, we have a collection of technologies that are maturing. We know what we need to do to scale. We know what we need to do to have a great light client experience. We know what we need to do to build a great governance system. We know what we need to do to build a great open source project. We know what we need to do to make a great developer experience and so forth. So just do it. Get it done. Don't talk about it. Do it. Paul Halmos was a famous mathematician, and he had this great saying. He was a Hungarian mathematician. He said, the key to writing a good proof is tell them what you're going to do, do it, and tell them what you did. So we're in the do it phase. We're doing it. We're building it. You know, and then after we build it, we'll tell them what we did. You know, you know, haters will be haters. You know, we'll be poor. 